options are just a little bit different. Um, the, the way that the character sets work in OCL Hashcat is kind of specific. So he's gonna. Here's another attack. I, I just had a few different ones in my slides. Yeah. So this is this is a combination attack uh, where you're you're running Hashcat again on that NTLM list, which is really MD5s, and <laughs> and you're specifying 80 threads, and you're you're also specifying big dot LST, which is a dictionary file here, and then you're saying take every combination in that dictionary file and add four digits to the end. So question mark D equals one digit. We'll see if we actually. How many are in that in that box? Oh, 17,000. So again, this box takes a little while to spin up the GPUs. There it goes. Yeah. Huh, my name. Um. So this was. Th was this from? Uh, oh, this is why he chose that. This is one of the rules they used. Was right. words with. Just words it. with letters at the end. But see, so if you can, the reason that this is cool is see how there's a real pattern here, words with numbers at the end. So if you can recognize a pattern, so if you can take a list, what the fingerprint attack does is if you can take a list of a million passwords and you can crack 50 of them or 100 of them, you have enough to recognize a pattern. And then so based on that, you can use the expander, but you can also do rule-based attacks like this where... We're specifying every word in a dictionary with four letters at the end because commonly people put the date, you know, at the end of their password, the date they were born, the date their kid was born, or, you know, two digits and uh, four digits at the end of a password is always really good. And then a special character at the end. You know, most common Windows domain admins require you to have one capital letter, you know, one digit and one special character. So what are people are going to do? They're going to capitalize the first letter of the word, you know, of their name, for example, and then they're going to put the date that they were born, and then they're going to put a star or an asterisk or a dollar sign or some easy to remember special symbol. So if you can recognize a pattern like that, you can get this so specific that it will look for those type of passwords. Also, if you're doing a corporation, I have to imagine your know, project names or name of corporation and a series of numbers. Absolutely, and that's where Naming something I didn't on devices. Something I didn't have time to show in this demo that I, that I wanted to was um, there's an old tool in Backtrack that one of the original developers wrote that um, hardly anybody knows about. It's called wyd.pl. And what it does is if you just use wget on the command line and wget a whole website and, and wy, I don't know what it's called, but y.pl will actually parse even the JPEGs, the PHP files, everything, and it will create a word list out of the entire website. And so if you were doing a penetration test on a company, for example, and you had dumped their database and got 100 million hashes, the next step would be to download and parse every single website that they own or is linked to them or whatever, and you could build your dictionary from there, and then you could move on to some of these things that yeah. Alex showed us. Rob Wood has a tool called, I think it's Cool or something like that, C-E-W, whatever. Yeah, that does a lot. Does. And it, that's a very similar, very similar tool. It's kind of the newer version, and it does work good. So here's another combination where I take the the one, and I'm specifying four different character sets, or, or every key on the U.S. keyboard, and, and then applying it to the end. Also, I wanted to point out one misconception about Hashcat, and it took me a while to figure this out, is that when you specify, say, a word list and then four variables after, it's not going to try three like every word in that list with three variables after it. So it's it, it's not incrementing. It is specifically doing four characters afterwards. So it's not going to try, you know, if Alex was one of the words in the big list, it's not going to try Alex and one number, Alex and two numbers, Alex and three numbers. It's going to try Alex and four variables after always. So... But but that also makes this really easily scriptable in a batch script. And yeah. there is a batch script included. It's it's not the best. It needs some work, and we're all working on it. But it's really easy to just script all these attacks one after the other and, and let it go. There it is. And, uh, and the output file will keep appending to itself um, so it doesn't overwrite itself. So in a batch script, you can specify many types of attacks and have it go through a bunch of different patterns, which you'll see right here. So right here it's saying run 
uh, an, a brute force with lower cases, the first character digits is the next four or seven characters, basically. And so you can see through this shell script that, that we've been working on, it, it adds a lot of different types of attacks, basically. And, and that's that. The documentation is horrible on OCL Hashcat right now, and Hashcat for that matter. And so, uh, learning it, you'll either have to ask somebody, figure it out yourself, or so, yeah, look at this shell script. What's that? Is it in German? Yeah. Uh, so and the his, forms are pretty. Oh, good. His, his site is, is not. No, his site is no, English. It's English. There's just no documentation. Yeah. The forms about the best place to it's search. Very little. I've written a couple articles. What's that? Yeah. The forms about the best place yeah, to search. Forms yeah. Has some the forums. Yeah. I got this error. Look for it. You know, well, we are going to come out with documentation here soon. We wrote We're some articles on question defense on it too, basic, and uh, we're uh, just working on some documentation um, for it. But um, this shell script, um, once we get it working the way that we want it to, will be really effective. I mean, as you can see, it completes. And some of these attacks are completed really fast. It looks like a lot, but um, the shell script as it sits right now can finish. You know fairly quickly depending on the size of the dictionary. Some of the attacks are dictionary specific. Um, you don't ever want to load a big giant dictionary, you know, you know. The biggest I've ever used probably is 500 megabytes, which is probably still too big. Um, but even even this batch script, the fingerprinting attack is way superior to the batch script. Is there any questions anybody has on Hashcat, OCL Hashcat from the CLI or anything like that? What was the scope of the masking on the end there again, to the left and right? Like the question mark L. The yeah, so. Meaning you, of all that? Just the L, L's meaning lower, question mark L's meaning lowercase okay. character set in this scenario. So when, when you see, say, that line right above the last echo there, uh -huh. and it shows four, question mark L four times, and then question, space question mark L four times, what that's basically saying in Hashcat terms is try only lowercase characters for all eight character places. And it's it's basically saying, it's it, again, it operates in two sides, right? So you're specifying four on this side and four on this side. And what it's doing is doing every combination of, of lowercase in, in eight character places. And so if I change those L's to D's, for instance, it would be digits. If I change it to S's, it would be special characters only. And so... It goes back to pattern matching, and and uh, again, even further, it goes it goes to fingerprinting. It's finding patterns that real people use. One uppercase character followed by six lowercase characters followed by two digits, or something like that. So if you did like question mark L or question mark D, it's only going to look for lowercase in the first. And Correct. Exactly. Second. And that's why uh, that's why we specify the one. In the beginning, so the targeted attacks you can just use digit, letter. But if you want to use more than one, that's where the one comes in. If you think about it like an array in programming, where you assign more than one variable to the array, so basically to the one we're assigning all those digits, and then so when we put the one in the attack, it knows to use whatever um, character sets we assign to it in the beginning. Exactly, and, and under the same concept, you could probably, I've, I've never actually done this, but I'm guessing you could make a dash two and have three character sets on the right side, or so, you know, like lowercase digits and special characters or something like that. And that's putting your pass around the dictionary list with dog, depending on that last line, uh, four lowercase, then the word dog, then that four lowercase after it. Uh, no, no dictionary in this brute force to attack oh, at all. No, Zero dictionary, force. unless you specify the dictionary. That's what's cool about yeah, hashcat. Yeah, you specify the dictionary, it does. So instead of the, the variable, like, the, the variable, the password, and then the variable. No, it 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 would do again. Think of it as two sides. So you could take your dictionary and put it on the left side, which so would that's the uh, cancel uh, out the four L's. Four. Yeah, exactly. Right. You either append. So when you're working with a dictionary, you either append to the beginning or the end. So, and one of the other cool things is Hashcat, because dictionaries are are such great attacks, Hashcat's really cool because it's the only app that I know that will take two dictionaries and combine them and try every combination of every word in the left dictionary with every combination of every word in the right dictionary. And that's why the expander works so well on the fingerprint because you end up with, you know, capital D on the right side combined with every word in your dictionary list or something like that. Mentioned US keyboard. Can you put like multiple keyboards in there? 
You can do whatever you want. You can do whatever character set you want. Yeah. So if your keyboard... I don't know about my password. you using US keyboard. You can do... There's a... There's a... With the dash one, you can also do a custom character set. So if your keyboard will type the letter... Yeah, and I, I haven't tested, uh, you know, a bunch of different uh, char sets themselves from different languages, but I, I'm pretty sure as long as your shell will handle it, that Hashcat would handle it, no problem. Yeah, exactly. Anybody else? So for your whole left and right side thing, like I say, like the special characters usually would be on the end of the password. Possibly, so, or the beginning. Possibly. So for a password scheme, would you want to say put, your, put special characters in the middle? Would that get around what is your password profiling for and, the left and right? Oh, you're just saying that password strength in general? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, length of password, I, it's almost like nothing safe these days. And so unless you're using <laughs> an encrypted way to store your passwords and you're randomly generating, you know, 10 plus, 12 plus character passwords for every single thing you do. I mean, it, it's, yeah, there's, it's best to have special characters in the middle and the beginning along with uppercase, lowercase, and at least a digit, you know, or, or something like that because the more stuff like that you add, the more you're complex it's going to be. Even if that's less than 12 characters, you're still not safe because you get so many. I mean, right now, and again, I would, it's not like everybody in the world is extremely hip on password cracking in general, but right now, I mean, if Martin and I wanted to get into any hashed anything that is below 12 characters, we could do it in less than three days. So, I mean, again, you'd have to really have the want. You know, I mean, I've never had a reason that I really wanted to break into something that bad, you know, or whatever. So I don't... It would it would have to be somebody who is malicious, and it would have to be somebody who knew what was going on with password cracking in general. You know, I mean, and your theory is good because yeah. it, putting special characters in the middle would would get around a lot of the um, attacks that we would do off off the you know from the beginning, where we would generally put them in the beginning and the end. Where that type of reasoning fails is if you do that personally, you'd probably be much more secure. But if you're a system admin at a company and you require everybody in your company to do that, that's where it's going to fail because now you've created a pattern in the fingerprint attack. So all we need to do, say, is brute force uh, you know, 50 or 60 passwords from your database and we see that the fourth and fifth character every time is a special character, then we can... Uh, you know, modify our attack to, to, to based on that schematic and then crack more passwords that way. Yeah, and so for instance, uh, lowercase and digits at six characters, we can probably crack every single combination of any style hash in like three seconds. So definitely, but when you when you add special characters to that, I mean, it doesn't add a lot, but it's infinitely bigger, right? And so if you add, if it's just eight characters and you're using at least uppercase special characters, lowercase and digits, for instance, I mean, it can take more time. I mean, I think an eight character at that for MTLM is like an hour. Seems to me like, like hours, you know what I mean? Seems to me like passphrase is the way to go. It's a, that's a great, great it's, a, it's a good way to go. So people but there are of historical there's quotes dictionaries and of passphrases, <laughs> too, you know what I mean? I mean, there's, there's, there's really a lot of historical stuff out there. Phrases. Yeah, it's, it's length. Like, I mean, it oh, like and, and, size does matter. And, yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and nobody being able to size you up in, you know, in any way, shape, or form, such as grabbing your word, a word well, list. From your list. Size does matter to size your password, but True. according to this Absolutely. tool, you can get by with a small dick. <laughs> well, it is like that. You're right on getting the hash, but I mean that's you know. I mean, if, if it's you manage a network, network with more it's than two trivial, and, and when a network is exploded, right. I can guarantee you that the first oh, thing yeah. that happens is the hash is removed. That's the idea. And and on top of that, most websites you know have at least some kind of XSS or vo or SQL injection vulnerability, and most of those websites are linked to the SQL yeah. database mm -hmm. and. Uh, <coughs> And, and for example, like WordPress, if you don't change if you don't change the WP underscore of the WordPress database, then technically anyone who wants to SQL inject a WordPress database already knows the names of all your tables. 
So, and also, say it was just a WordPress site, and it does, the site means nothing, but the employees have signed up for it. If you just get a password out of that, then 